Hi, this is Greg Benz with an overview of a new luminosity masking tool for Photoshop that I call Lumencia. If you're familiar with luminosity masks, then you already know that they are one of the most powerful ways to create professional results in Photoshop. You can do absolutely amazing things, and if you just look at the top images on 500 pics or a number of websites these days, you'll see um, several images, especially landscapes, that use luminosity masking uh, techniques in order to achieve really stunning results. Um, and at the same time, if you're familiar with the luminosity masks, then you probably realize that um, they are challenging to learn um, and really can be pretty cumbersome to use. So I set out nine months ago with the goal of creating a completely new approach to luminosity masks that would be faster, easier, and, and ultimately provide much more control and flexibility. So let me show you, just starting with a comparison to my own free luminosity masking actions. So these are the masking actions you can find on my website. You simply open them up, run them, and that's going to generate a series of channels here in Photoshop. And right off the bat, a couple of things to note. First, the file increased from 200 megs to 1.4 gigs in size. So it got seven times bigger just by creating these masking channels here. Now, of course, um, I can delete them, uh, but that just creates more work and I have to remember to do that. Um, but once I have these, I just go and click down to find the one that I want and I can command or control click on it, flip back over to the layers panel and click on curves. And now I've got a curve with that mask and looks like I gotta go back and sort of click around to get rid of that red um, and make an adjustment. So, um, so I've made a curves adjustment to the uh, values in the sky here, right? So everything that is white is highly selected. And so I've taken the right hand side of the sky there and made it more blue and more balanced against the rest of the sky. Um, but you know, it, it really, um, you know, wasn't uh, necessarily the easiest thing to do. And the uh, history here, if we look at this, just creating the luminosity mask alone generates 72 history states. Um, I had to flip back and forth to the channels palette. So a, a lot of kind of back and forth with all this history here. Uh, it can be really hard to figure out where to go back if you want to go back a step or two. And if you want to undo, there's no controller command Z. Once I create those channels, I got to run another script to, to get rid of them. Um, you know, and unless I have a ton of memory and, you know, 100 or 200 history states, you know, um, set up in my Photoshop preferences, I probably can't go back in history or certainly it's going to be a little bit like finding a needle in a haystack with this much activity being logged. So that's just kind of a quick reference on um, the traditional approach here. So let's take a look at Lumencia and how it functions. So First thing you notice is uh, the very top of the panel contains very familiar um, different channel masks, the darks, midtones, lights, and I can just simply click on these to start generating previews. And when I find the one I like, so this is an exact preview of the mask. It's gonna look exactly like this. So I get a full screen look at this. And if I like this, I just simply click on one of these orange options here to load it up. So I've just taken that selection, and I've put it on a curve and now I can go and make that same adjustment. So we just achieved the same thing as before, but we did that with just a couple of history states, essentially three steps when you take out the uh, jumping back and forth here. Um, so a little bit easier to see things. And at any point I can control or command Z to go back or click on this to go back in time. Uh, my file size only increased by the size of this new layer that I created. I don't have 1.2 gigs of, of channels there. So, so that's kind of a, a nice start. Let's take a look at what else we can do with this. So, um, you know, in this image here, while we darken the sky on the right, to me, it still um, doesn't match the beautiful blues on the left. So ultimately these uh, cyan blue colors here are not fully saturated. Well, I could um, add a hue saturation layer and boost up the blues, but then the left-hand side would push up too much. So I don't want to increase the saturation. I really want to increase the vibrance but Photoshop doesn't have a color specific vibrance option. So if I boost the vibrance, I'm gonna be changing these leaves and there's some purple colors in the wall that are probably gonna to start to come out and I'm just gonna create some other issues. So this is a great place for using a saturation mask or in this case, a vibrance mask. 
um, and it's basically going to select parts of the image based on how saturated they are. So vibrance is parts of the image that are not saturated. So these areas that are highly saturated are pretty dark in the mask, and the areas that were less saturated are white. And I can load this as a hue saturation layer and open this up and just click and drag to change the saturation on the cyans here. But because it's only applying to the cyans and only in the areas that are less saturated, all I've done is adjust the sky on the right here. The left hand side stays good and you can see what happens if I turn off the mask, the left hand side of the sky just goes crazy, almost kind of a purple look, not at all natural. So um, nice way to use uh, saturation and vibrance masks built right into Lumencia. Now, as we look at this, you know, um, this previous adjustment I made in the sky here, you note that it created some collateral damage, and that's because ultimately the sky on the right and the this is the state capital in Austin, Texas, are about the same brightness value. So even though it's obvious to us that this is blue and this is yellow, from a luminosity perspective, they're about the same. So I could go and start painting this mask out to get rid of that um, or do some other selection to try and grab the sky. But Lumencia offers a much easier way to approach this and that is to use something called a color group. So I just simply click on this and it's going to bring up a panel here where I can start to click on the colors I want. So I'm going to start selecting the blues and I can see this preview of what's being selected here. And I'll just hit OK and now I've created a mask on my mask. So this adjustment is being applied only in these areas here. So I have the sky highly selected and everything else is you know, relatively not selected. And so now when I turn on and off the sky here, we can see that the sky looks great, but the Capitol building wasn't changed. If I turn this mask off again, you can see that you know, we've gotten rid of that issue. Now, if you don't need separate standalone masks here, then there's really no reason to keep them. That can be kind of clutter and it can add file space. Um, and so with a mask the mask approach, one option in Lumencia is use ungroup. So I simply click on this and what's gonna happen is it's gonna take these two masks and merge them into a single mask. So I just simply click on this and now I have a single mask that is essentially the lights three in the blue areas of the image and the total impact is exactly the same, but I've saved on file space and clutter. So that's a, a really nice little feature to keep things simple. So next, um, you know, as I look at this image, this lower railing to me is a little bit dark. I may want to adjust that. Um, you know, I could start playing with uh, the, the darks, but you know, these aren't really um, fully black areas. They're kind of super dark midtones, so I could play with some of these dark mid-tone values and see if I can get a good selection here and this might be okay um, but I could also start using these different zone masks down here so I've got sort of an Ansel Adams style 0 through 10 system where I can click on zone 0 and 1 and 2 looks like it's getting pretty good there and 3 and kind of go through but you can see these are all the different range of brightness in the image so I can pick any particular mid-tone I want and that zone will be highly selected with nice natural feathering. So it has the same qualities uh, of a luminosity mask in that the, the transitions are very natural. Um, and at the same time, I may not always want such a targeted zone. Um, so I've created a five zone system where you see these A through E. And so I can click on these and it's same kind of concept, but they just cover a broader range of tones for each of these different selections. So I could pick one of these to, to pick this lower railing. However, um, I don't have to know that that's zone two or zone three or whatever it is. And I really don't have to play with that. Uh, an easier option is to just simply click on this zone picker tool. And I just click on the tone that I want to select and hit OK. And Lamenti will automatically identify what that tone was and select it. And now I can just load that up as a curve and I can start to adjust that. So let's bring this up. So we're boosting the shadows here, which I think looks pretty good. But of course, just like before, you can see that while it fixed things in the railing, there's other dark shadow areas in the image that got adjusted. And I don't want to lose that detail elsewhere. So 
what I need to do is restrict this mask just to the right parts of the image. And so I can do that by just simply using the lasso tool. And I'm going to select around the area where I want to keep the adjustment. And then I just use the group tool here. And it's going to create uh, this mask the mask approach. And you'll notice that the selection has already been feathered. So Lumencia will analyze the selection and create uh, automatically uh, feather uh, on that selection. So um, you can modify that if you want to, but it's really, it, you know, 99% of the time going to give you the, the feathering you need. So now we can see that we've lightened up these shadow areas down below, but without all this collateral damage elsewhere. So really clean and simple way to target the luminosity mask there. So the next thing I might want to do here, um, you notice the left-hand side of the building is just brighter than the right-hand side. So ultimately these spotlights on the side of the building for some reason were just a lot brighter than the others. So um, I'm going to load up a zone selection here using one of these wide zone D here and load it onto a dodge burn layer. So what I have now is a dodge and burn layer that's restricted to these lighter tones which match up with the building here. So with that, I can now just simply load up my black brush and just start to paint right over that area. And so we've got, let's see, actually, um, in this case, I accidentally painted right on the mask, so that was a mistake there. But again, very easy to just go back to the dodge and burn step. And now I'm going to paint on the pixel layer and huh, let's do this with black there we go all right so now made that quick adjustment there and to me it kind of looks like I may have hit some of the darker tones a little bit more than I want I'm not entirely sure about that so I can throttle this back I can also change how this is masked so um, if I want to load this up instead to cover zone E I can pull up zone E and when I hit remask here, what it's going to do is Lumencia will get rid of the mask I have and apply this new zone E mask. So I'm going to replace zone D with zone E. So it's loading that up and you'll see um, it even renames it. So Lumencia is automatically going to keep track of the different adjustments you make. So as you apply the luminosity mask, you have a record that I use lights three and zone A and zone E. Um, so it just makes it really clean and simple to see your adjustments. And so now we can see that that dodge and burn looks a lot more natural by just getting it to the right zone. So that's another one of the advantages of Lumencia is, you know, if you load up the wrong mask, um, it's very easy to swap it and, and get the one you need. So you can you know really see the difference between, you know, what's a, a lights four and a lights five mask do, et cetera. All right. So things are starting to look pretty good. The next thing I might want to do now is vignette the image, specifically darken down the corners up top. So again, I'm going to grab the lasso tool and this time I'm just going to draw a selection around the areas that I want to have a vignette. And the beauty of what I'm doing here with Lumencia is you can vignette any shape you want. You can do a circle, an oval, or all sorts of crazy shapes and you just load up that shape, hit vignette, and you automatically have vignetted these areas out here. Um, just like before when we created that group mask, um, this is feathered for you. Um, obviously, I let a few areas in down below, so I wasn't very clean there, but I can paint that out, or I could just simply redo that. Um, if I just undo Command-Z, I'm back to my selection, I'm just going to hit the shift key and I can quickly add to my selection. So now I've got a much better selection. Now I'll hit the vignette and I've got a, a better looking vignette there. And so with just that simple step, I was able to darken down the sky um, very cleanly and simply. And this could be any shape that I want it to be. So just a really powerful uh, tool to help guide the viewer through the image. Let's get rid of the duplicate vignette here. Um, so then the, uh, the next thing here, um, let's kind of sharpen up the, uh, the building here. So Lumencia has a sharpen option built into it. Um, I tend to like not, I don't want to sharpen 
too much of the brighter pixels. Sometimes that brings out some noise. I don't want to sharpen the shadows. I can bring up some noise. Um, so I'm actually going to load up a mid-tone 3 selection and then hit sharpen, which is going to give me sharpening just in the mid-tones. So pull this up here, and this is a surface blur um, type of sharpening. So a uh, great way to help minimize noise and other artifacts you might get through other sharpening techniques. Um, it's also been optimized for 16-bit images, so even though surface blur um, looks kind of slow here, this is actually about four times faster than you would normally see on a 16-bit image. And so just to kind of zoom in here a bit and show you what we've just done, um, here's kind of the before and after, so really nice clean sharpening effect, and it's been applied just to the parts of the image where I wanted it. So I really have nice control over noise if I need it. And of course I could sharpen without this uh, if I want to. And um, it's been designed where I can very quickly just increase or decrease the opacity. So I can go in here and as you can see, I uh, just took up the opacity from 50% you know, up. And so you can strengthen that effect. So a lot of good flexibility um, with those tools. So at this point, things are, uh, are looking pretty good. I'm gonna clean up a bit. I'm gonna get rid of this group I no longer need. Um, now again, notice we've got kind of the this arch that's been selected here um, against you know this darker zone A mask here. I'm gonna combine these. And one nice thing I really love about the ungroup option is it gives you a great way to cleanly visualize exactly what you're doing. So. Just saves a little file space, saves some layers there, and just kind of a, a nice way to see how things are, are working. Uh, and usually, you know, when I collapse groups like that, I find that I tend to save probably about 20% um, in terms of my file size on a lot of images. So that can, that can really add up uh, if you're doing that consistently. So um, that's just kind of a brief overview of Lumencia. There's actually a, a fair bit more under the hood, but just wanted to show the highlights. Um, this is the uh, Adobe Photoshop CC version here. So if you're in CC, CC 2014, or any future versions, um, this is the panel you'll see. Um, it is also designed to run under Photoshop CS6, but because of some changes Adobe made um, in moving from Flash to HTML5, you'll see that that panel looks a bit different, but the functionality is the, is the same. And this will run on both Mac and PC.